This is just one piece of a multi-part course working with actions inside of Moho Pro 13. If you'd like more information on this course and to receive 20% off, click the link in the top comment. Before we jump in and start adding actions, I want to take a moment to highlight the differences between the actions, especially since Moho 13 introduces new features to the actions panel, which makes it more organized and easier to work with. So first, I'm just going to take the layers here and bring them over here to my other monitor, and I'll bring those back when needed. And let's go up here to Window and locate Actions. It's also Control-Shift-M or Command-Shift-M, I would assume, on Mac. So you can also use that shortcut if you wish. So now, we're going to bring up the actions for this rig, or more specifically, the actions for the Chad Bone layer. So just to overview how actions work, in the previous course, when we set up this rig, which is the vector rig, we went in and added different smart bones to correct different movements with the character. In addition, we also went in and added dials to help control certain aspects of the character, which you'll see right here. We have the head up and down, we have blinks, eyebrow movements, as well as head left and right. In addition to all of the other things we can do with the rig, such as moving him around. And you'll see we have all those actions on display right here. Now, one thing to mention, and again, this can get tricky, especially if you are new to Moho. These actions are based on the layer you have selected. So right now we're on the bone layer. All of these corrected actions have the bone layer being used on some level, especially since we have all these dials. But if I were to go and click on head mesh, you can see that the actions change. And that's because head mesh is only involved with the head left and right and head up and down actions. And we also have some other actions that you can look at that are associated with that particular layer. And you'll come in here and you can see, for instance, that the body has different actions associated with it. You can go in and you'll get different results based on what you're clicking on. And I just wanted to point that out. So in case if you are trying to work on an action and you're, let's say, accidentally on a vector layer and you're looking at this and you're like, well, why is it highlighting some and not showing some others? It's because you're not on the right layer. For the most part, we're going to be using the bone layer to start and we'll be going to other layers to make certain corrections if needed. But for now, Let's make sure we are on that bone layer. And you'll also notice next to these actions, we have this dial. And this dial icon indicates that this action is tied to either a bone or a dial that we created. For instance, we have one called blink. You'll see that blink is here within our list. If I were to grab the select bone tool, Again, on that bone layer, I can just click on the select bone tool and we can click on any of these bones and you'll see that we have b.thigh, for instance. And that one doesn't have an action associated with it, but if we click on f.thigh, you'll see even when we click on the bone, it will highlight the action associated with that bone. So if I click on blink, you'll see that blink is being highlighted. And whenever you create an action, the same name as a bone, you can create what is called a smart action. And that will have different results based on what you're doing with the bone. So if we come in here and we were to adjust the blink action, you can see here with this dial, we can either bring it down or up. And that whole action, if we were to double click on blink, is controlled here. We animated that in the vector rigging course. So with that, and now we know what those dial icons mean. Let's take a look at two additional actions which we'll be creating in this course. The first is simply what I'll refer to as a step action or a step pose. So the first thing you need to do is make sure that no bones are selected. And once you have that, making sure nothing is red, that will indicate a selected bone if it's red, we want to come over here to the actions panel 
and we're simply going to create a new action. So let me just make sure here I can see this whole panel. There we are. When you're looking at the whole panel, on the bottom, you'll have the ability to create that new action. So if we click on new, since we have no bone selected, it's just going to create a standard action. You'll know you're in an action when the timeline changes to that pink or light red color. When we create the action initially, we have the ability to name it. I'll just name this one test pose just for right now and then hit enter. Now on this test pose frame, I'm just going to do one thing. That's what we're going to refer to as a step. So if I come in here and we take the bone tools and I'll grab just the manipulate or transform bone tool here, and I'm on frame one, that's where the action starts us at anyway. Whenever you create an action, you will always begin on frame one, not zero. I'm just going to come in here and create something really simple. It's just going to be the arm going up. And once I'm good, I can come back here to the actions panel and double click on main timeline to go back out. You'll notice here as we page through this, when we get to test pose, it looks different. That icon looks different compared to the others. And that's because it's simply an action. In this case, a one frame action. And that icon is indicating that. If we double click and go in, you can see we can alter it. And we have here the initial pose. And that's all I did. And I could, of course, keep going with this if I want to. Now, let's do something else. So we can see here that this is different compared to these. But there is one more type we can create. And that involves creating multiple frames. And again, making sure that we have no bones selected, but we are on the bone layer, as you can see right here. We're just going to come in and make a new action once again. This will act very similar to what we just did. It'll have that pink timeline. It'll ask us to create an action. In this case, I'm just going to name this test animation and then hit enter. Now we're going to come in and just do a very simple animation more than one frame within this action. So we'll start here and I'm just going to click once on this bone on frame one to establish a keyframe and then just go to frame 12 and go up like this. Something really simple. The point is we have animation 12 frames of it within this action before we only had one frame if you recall. So now we're good there and we're going to double click on this to go back out. Notice how this icon looks. It has a different look compared to not only the dial, but if we go down here to the bottom, the step pose, which is only one frame, has like a warp or squiggly thumbnail associated with it. But if we come over here to this, which looks kind of like almost like a circle being filled up with this, what appears to be a graph, if we come in, you'll see here that we now have more frames and the timeline is pink as well. So it's also different compared to this, which is just one frame, which is a light green color. And again, the differences between those two is simply you have more frames of animation and the differences between the others, such as these, when we go in, these are blue, are associated with bones. We are correcting actions. So you can see here front forearm, if we come in here, we corrected this action back in the previous course. When we bent the arm up this way within the action, we went into the vectors within this character and we made our corrections. So if I come in here to the arm, you can see that we have those vectors being corrected just like that. So that is what a correction or smart dial action portrays itself as with that little icon, which can be very useful at a glance. So now when we're looking at this, you can say, oh yeah, that's definitely an animation because we have that icon and we can, of course, verify that. But also, oh, there's a step pose as well. Very easy to pick out when you're working like this. Also, you can search and filter out your actions based on what you want. So you could, of course, just search. So if we want to bring up those test poses, just type in test, brings it up. 
Also, you can very easily at a glance tell what kind of actions they are. Also, going to all will allow you to filter these out. So you have your regular actions, which I was referring to as an animated action. You have your morphs, which in this case are steps. So I'll probably refer to those as morphs as much as possible, just so there's no confusion. But those are what I consider step poses, your animated poses, and then your smart bones, which again are those correction bones. So you can go in and organize that, and you can filter these things out fairly easily. So with all that said, we're going to pause here and up next, take a quick look at how we can organize this further before we dive in and prepare our rig for more actions. And there's definitely more to learn with this course. We go through build up in actions library. We talk about the different action types. We talk about what actions are more appropriate for others. We even build an optional actions dial if you wish to go that route. So there's a lot to cover in this two and a half hour course. Please click the link in the top comment to check it out and receive 20% off.